This short video will show you how to start a virtual server or virtual machine from an existing disk image and how to access it using a key pair and security groups. In case you're not familiar with the Fiverr Lab cloud concepts and terminology, we recommend that you attend the introductory courses on the educational platform of the Fiverr project. We will start by assuming you correctly logged in into the cloud portal. Your administrator should have provided you with uh, login credentials. If not, use the instructions at the Fiverr website to request an account. Once logged in, a user can see that the interface is organized in several sections accessible from the menu on the left side. The sections represent the main concepts typically of a compute cloud, plus some fiware specific additions, such as, for instance, blueprints. In this short video, we will concentrate on the plain compute cloud concepts from OpenStack, which is the baseline for Fiware Lab. Before creating the VM, we will take a look at some preparation we have done in the security page. The security page is organized in three tabs, concerning floating IPs, security groups, and user key pairs. A floating IP is a public IP address that can be associated to a virtual server to be accessed remotely. For each floating IP, you can see the actual IP address, the instance it is associated to, in this case, no instance, and the pool of addresses it belongs to. A security group is a set of firewall rules that can be associated to a virtual server to enable or prevent access to specific services and ports. In this case, I prepared some rules that will allow access to the virtual ma uh, machine we will create to port 80, a web server, port 22 for SSH, and port 8080. Finally, very important, the key pairs tab allows the creation and management of pi private and public key pairs associated to a user. Please note that, in general, access to virtual servers by username and password is disabled by default. For these reasons, before starting a virtual, machines, a virtual machine, it is very important that users create their own key pair and save their private key on their personal devices. This will allow them to successfully access the virtual machine they will create. We will now show how to actually create the new virtual machine from an existing image. So the images link shows a list of virtual machine images that are available to the current user. A virtual machine image is a single file which contains a virtual disk that has a bootable operating system installed on it. Virtual machines images come in different formats in terms of containers and disks. Any number of instances of virtual machines can be started from the same image. Each instance is run from a copy of the base image so that runtime changes made by an instance do not change the image it is based on. So in order to launch, to start a, a, a virtual machine from uh, an image, I will click on the launch button. This will show up a, a pop-up window called launch instances. I need to select a name for the instance and we will not use uh, uh, user data, we will choose a flavor. When starting an instance, a set of virtual resources known as flavor must be selected. Flavors define how many virtual CPUs an instance will have, the amount of RAM and the size of its uh, disks. OpenStack provides a number of predefined flavors which cloud administrators may edit or modify. Users must select from the set of available flavors defined in the cloud. In this case, I will, I will simply pick a tiny flavor. So I will just use one virtual CPU and uh, very little RAM. Um, very important now, remember to choose your private key pair that you must, uh, the, the key pair that you must have saved uh, on your local machine. I will only start one instance and also very important, choose the security group that will uh, set that will open the ports that we will need. A new server instance appears in the instance page. It's being spawned and when the virtual machine starting process is over, 
its status will be active and its power state will be running. By clicking on the virtual machine name, we can see some detail, for instance, the specification of the virtual resources, IP addresses, default group, and other information. Before we can actually access uh, the virtual machine, we have to associate a public IP address to it. So we go to the security uh, page, uh, the floating IPs tab, and we click, right click and associate an IP, associate this public IP to the only virtual machine we have here. So this IP will be associated to this instance. And we can also see it from the instance page. So now the, this virtual machine will have two network interface cards, one on a private network and one on a public network. And now, given this IP address, a user can access it using the associated private key. In this case, I have already saved this private key on, on this machine. I will connect to the same IP address using username root and using SSH minus I, the private key. And in this case, I am in. I logged in into the virtual machine.